Hey, what's going on everybody? I know it has been quite a while since I've done a vlog update and I apologize for that, but I'm sure you understand that every once in a while you need to just kind of go do your own thing, right? And just get out and shoot for yourself and explore <clears throat> and um, spend time with your family. I'm a really I'm really big on that, you know, uh, doing the family thing. Every weekend pretty much we're at our camper um, as you know for following the vlog posts and uh, this last weekend was no exception only this last weekend kind of was a little bit of an exception to that rule because rather than it being just a couple of days off uh, we started our family fun on a Tuesday evening so um, got out of work Tuesday afternoon and immediately headed north to the camper and it was pretty exciting to be able to spend uh, so many days, you know, five days uh, with my family just kind of exploring the west side of the state um, and spent a day at a local amusement park uh, riding roller coasters and playing in the uh, water park there and spent another day exploring the town of Ludington which is um, it's a great little West Michigan community that just has a beautiful state park, um, gorgeous beaches, uh, incredible lighthouse. Um, actually, this lighthouse right here was uh, shot. It's uh, in Ludington at the state park that we visited. And um, so, yeah, that's kind of what the last, uh, well, from Tuesday night until Sunday night uh, encompassed. And then, you know, Monday, Tuesday, and today is Wednesday uh, of this week has just been decompressing and getting back into the nine to five work routine um, and I guess I'll just spend this vlog post uh, maybe just talking a little bit about um, what I shot and uh, what I brought with me as far as gear goes you know to shoot um, I can tell you that the video footage that you'll see all of the video footage is shot with this um, done with the TG tracker uh, right now the way the tracker is configured I've got the wide angle port on it um, which allows for the the widest field of view and I don't have it upstairs with me in my room but there's another port that goes on this that offers uh, a narrower field of view less distortion um, when shooting video and I'll indicate in the video clips when I share those here momentarily uh, which port you know the the tracker was set up with but I don't think I'll need to uh, really explain it because if it's ultra wide it's shot with this domed port and if the field of view was narrower then obviously it was shot with the other port. Uh, something that was fun that I got to do that you'll see is uh, offer some first person perspective on riding a roller coaster and I will warn you right now that I giggle and laugh and make all kinds of celebratory sounds just like a goofy little kid on a roller coaster because I'm not a huge roller coaster person per se um, so I think that my natural reaction is to laugh and scream and you know squeal or whatever you know as a uh, coping mechanism <laughs> with a little bit of fear I guess um, you know like a year ago or so um, I went to Whistler with Olympus and one of the activities that we did there was zip lining and we zip lined um, actually literally from mountain to mountain across this humongous valley and you were hundreds of feet in the air so much higher than roller coaster and that was not as scary as roller coasters are to me for some reason go figure so anyways um, again apologize for the uh, for the lapse in vlog posts um, I am currently working on putting together a video for this and I'm also going to do a follow-up review of the Vanguard Veo tripod. I just want to talk about uh, how well it has served me since I got it. I got this back in May, so the beginning of May actually, actually just before May. So May, June, July, here we are into August. Um, four months in, just kind of wanted to, to revisit how the Vanguard Veo um, tripod has been holding up and the Vanguard BBH 200 ball head how they've been holding up and how well they've performed for me over the last four months so just stay tuned for those two review videos that'll be coming up over the next two weeks 
promise. Um, and as well as that, I'll try to continue and get the uh, the vlog updates to be a little bit more regular than they have been. Um, just kind of getting that routine going. But what's kind of a bummer is I'm putting this video out here on Wednesday and Friday we'll be headed right back up to the camper again. And sadly, it's just not, it's not the easiest thing for me to, I can put together the vlog post, I suppose, on the road. I do have downtime every evening. It's just getting it uploaded. I had done some earlier in the year vlog posts that um, that I had uploaded with my phone. I shot them on my phone and used the Adobe Clip app to sort of edit them together. Um, but my phone shoots, well, my phone can shoot, you know, 4K, but um, I was shooting them in, I think, 1080p, and the file sizes were big, and I kept blowing our, um, our data cap, which leads to an expensive phone bill. <laughs> so that's why I haven't been doing uh, the vlog posts from on the road, um, and that's kind of, sort of, you know, a little bit of why the vlog posts have kind of fallen off, because... It hasn't been easy to, to document, you know, the weekends up there, which is kind of a bummer because they're really cool. And now he's running into some cool stuff to shoot up there. So I'll stop dragging this out. Um, I will narrate what you are about to see um, coming up, though. So, yeah, just sit tight. Thanks for being patient with the, uh, the big laps and vlog post regularity. And like I said, over the next two, three weeks at most, uh, stay tuned for follow-up reviews of the Vanguard Veo and it'll be kind of like a review slash how to or how I use the TG tracker which I'm loving this camera so um, and I know I promised that once I got it it would make my vlogging more regular <laughs> and it hasn't it just has made shooting video so much more fun that I'm not recording vlog content so much as I'm recording just everything that I do which I suppose should be in the vlogs, right? Anyways, I'll talk to you guys later. Again, thanks a lot for uh, understanding my laps, and I'll see you soon. Okay, like I promised, I'm going to go over a few of the photos that I shot while on vacation, and I'm also going to uh, play a couple of videos that were shot with the tracker. Uh, we'll start off with this first photo. This is just, this is my family. I just want to introduce you to Mason with the... Uh, stern look and the FBI hat on the far right. Um, <laughs> you know, the teenage years, right? Uh, 15 years old. Uh, next to him, my wife, Becky. Uh, notice she is uh, sporting the Stylus One camera, of course, an Olympus shooter. And uh, in between her and myself is my son, Carter, and he has no problem smiling for the camera. This was taken in Muskegon at PJ Hoffmaster State Park. And if you're a Michigan resident, I highly suggest you check out that state park. It is beautiful, wonderful trails full of wildlife. And it has a great visitor center that is uh, very informative and educational. I think everybody in the family really enjoyed that, that location. Uh, a little bit about what I brought with me. What's in my bag, you can see I'm carrying a uh, Think Tank Photo Retrospective 30, and I don't have it uh, secured to me in any way that makes sense. <laughs> I was running back to sit down uh, to to get in the shot here, but in the bag, I have the uh, the EM1, and I have a 150 millimeter f 2.8 Pro, the 12 to 40, and the 7 to 14. Uh, it's kind of a bigger kit, but you never know what you're going to see as far as wildlife are concerned when you're walking the trails. Uh, the next photo is taken actually on what would have been the previous day, and this is in Ludington at the state park there walking down the beach. Um, I just kind of wanted to get some like product type shots of the uh, the tracker so that when I do put together my, uh, my little walkthrough video, my review of it, I guess, that I'd have some photos to throw in the video. So I suppose you're getting a sneak peek at uh, one of the photos that'll probably end up in that video. And that's my son Carter in the background. Uh, we were walking down the beach towards the lighthouse that I showed you earlier in the video. And Carter noticed that I was no longer behind him, turned around to come back. And uh, when I saw him in the frame, I thought, well, cool, this actually kind of works as far as like a product shot goes. Um, and this was shot with the tough TG4. So I'm shooting one tough with another tough here on the, the beach at Ludington State Park in West Michigan. Uh, this next photo that I'm showing you 
is from a location that you might be familiar with if you follow some of my work online. Um, I shot an image a few weeks back during a uh, an approaching thunderstorm uh, at the same beach with lightning in the background over the lake. Uh, this is Kirk Park in West Olive, Michigan, which is south of Grand Haven. Uh, I chose this location to bring my family to on this trip for several reasons, uh, one of which is pretty obvious here with the photograph. It's a, a very photogenic beach with these um, with these uh, pylons or posts or pilings, I guess. I don't know, something that begins with a P. Uh, embedded into the the beach there from uh, old docks that were on that beach and you know this big old tree that is now driftwood that has kind of made its way up onto shore and kind of being embedded into the sand but um, so aside from being a photogenic place it's also a place where you can bring your dog it is a dog beach and it is a a off leash dog beach so you can basically bring your dog and just let him or her run wild on the beach and play in the water so this was our dog a little shih tzu uh, this was his first trip to the beach and he had no idea what to think of it i think he was a little freaked out <laughs> so but yeah so this was a sunset at uh kirk park uh, again it's in west olive michigan just south of grand haven and uh this next photo is actually um right near our campground and just want to talk just a second about this um this photo um so let me go back to the previous photo so here uh again this is kirk park and just want to talk about what this was shot with this was shot with the em5 mark ii and the 7 to 14 millimeter f 2.8 and there are a couple things going on here in this image that i feel i need to mention in in the this description here so number one is that I do have a filter on the lens and it is a filter I've talked about numerous times um, online both uh, in vlog posts and in Facebook conversations it is a filter system uh, made by Phil Norton a friend of mine over in the UK uh, has these 3d printed filter holders for the uh, square or rectangular filters uh, the one that I'm using on this is made by Nissi and it is a reverse graduated neutral density filter and um, this image is straight out of camera there's no post processing whatsoever save for a tiny tiny crop because in the uh, upper corners of the image I did not have the filter holder seated all the way back so I got a tiny bit of um, of the filter holder in the shot but I probably cropped out maybe like two percent of the image so it wasn't bad but um straight out of the camera using that filter and here's the funny part um this is a jpeg shot using a scene mode on the em5 mark ii i know people are like what you know like you're sponsored by olympus you shoot professionally for them and you're using a jpeg scene mode why not um this is the sunset scene mode and the results straight out of the camera were such that I felt no need to even touch the raw file in post. It was gorgeously rendered um, sunset. So if you can use a built-in mode in your camera to achieve a desired look, why would you not do that? Why would you take the extra steps to process a raw file unless you really, really enjoy working in post, which I do, but... I don't know that I would have achieved any better of a look processing the raw file than what the camera did itself. So, uh, yeah, I just thought I'd mention that to you guys that this is a uh, <laughs> a JPEG straight out of the camera using a scene mode, something that, you know, an amateur or new camera user would probably use. Loved the results. All right, on to the next image. So this next image is, again, has a little bit of a story that goes to it. But first I'll just mention um the equipment that was used for this shot and this one if i am not mistaken was shot with the uh it was with the um the 7 to 14 millimeter and um so this location is interesting it is probably a a five minute drive from our campground and i stumbled upon it on one of my trips up to the campground i took a, a back road to the camper and uh in the distance i saw this dome uh out in a field and thought wow okay this is kind of crazy at some point in time i'm going to shoot something here and i wasn't sure what i would shoot and i had found the dome a year ago 
and uh, and just shot it this year. But the night that I was going to shoot it, we were sitting around the campfire, and it was our last night that we were going to be there, Saturday night. And I was just beat, you know. It was just a long day. We'd done a lot. We'd spent hours at the beach in the sun, and I had done some work at the camper, you know. It's just kind of pooped, and I just wanted to rest. And uh, told my wife, I said, I'm going to go to bed. And she looked at me and said, I thought you said you were going to go shoot stars tonight. And I said, well, you know, they'll be there the next time. The stars aren't going anywhere. And I just had this weird, I don't even know what you'd call it. It was like this thought, I don't know, or just something spoke to me in my head and said, the stars will be there tomorrow. They'll be there for millennia, but you won't be. And I thought, wow, you're right. I won't be here forever. I might not even be here tomorrow. So I know it's, <laughs> it sounds so crazy, but I just thought, man, you know, I, I should just go shoot them. So that's what I did. I uh, packed up my stuff and drove the whole five minutes away, which in hindsight, I think, gosh, how ludicrous that I would even consider not going if it was so close. And um, so this is a federal government piece of property which has nice warning signs all around it telling you do not even consider trespassing so of course i did not consider trespassing um but the other side of this dome you know that you see here on the other side in the background i guess um is the road that you take to get to it so i had to walk around behind it into a field in the dark and that's always fun to hear coyotes out in the field uh making those creepy sounds that they do and so I just sat out there for about a half hour and just took shots, you know. Um, I didn't even do a live composite shot. I considered doing live composite, and I just kind of said, you know what, forget it. I'm just here pretty much straight after, you know, Milky Way, and that's it. So um, that's what I did, you know, and this is basically just, um, this is post-processed, obviously. Uh, due to the light pollution, it was hard to get the Milky Way to be really prominent in the photo, but... Um, yeah, you know, I just think every once in a while you need to to realize that, you know, there's not you're not guaranteed a tomorrow, you know, and um, just get out and see what you can when you have the time, you know, don't make excuses not to. So yeah, so that's that. Um, so the next thing I'm going to queue up for you guys after uh, these photos here are going to be two videos. Um, the first two are, and I apologize for the length of all of this, it's going to be a ridiculously long vlog post, but I just wanted you to see the videos shot with the TG Tracker. Um, rather than do an overlay on the videos describing uh, which video is shot how, I'll just tell you, even though you'll be able to see pretty obviously um, in the videos. But the first one is shot with the narrower field of view port. It's like the underwater port um, for the tracker. And this was my son and I's first trip on the roller coaster. <laughs> and you can probably tell by my expression that it was definitely the first ride of the day. And uh, and then after that is done playing, I will immediately transition into the second trip of the day, which offers a first-person perspective of the roller coaster ride. And that is shot with the, uh, the domed port or the really wide angle port. And then I'll just close out the video with a couple of small clips um, probably from like the wave pools there at uh, at the the water park. And, and we'll just call this an end to the video as far as me talking is concerned. Again, thank you guys for uh, watching and tuning in and subscribing. And again, you know, for putting up with the, uh, the intermittent vlog posts. I'll talk to you guys later. You guys take care and get out there and shoot. Because like I said, tomorrow's not a guarantee, but right this second is. See ya. Be all right, Carter. Yep. You holding on tight? Yep. Okay.
People saying, oh no. <laughs>